Hello, everybody, and welcome to a short interview with Anna Forrest and Jose Calaco. Now, both of them are living legends, as you can see on their <laughs> the screen. <laughs> it, I'll, I'll personally, th this two person has affected my life in so many, many, many ways. Uh, physically, I have improve myself from having like, you know, back pain and all those modern living issues, wrist pain. And exactly four years ago, I took a foundation tissue training with both of them in Berlin, exactly four years ago in this month, September. So it's like coming back in the full circle and really honored to have Jose Calaco, Ana Flores together with her in this very short interview. So very good evening to you. Yes, in, in Seattle. Welcome to our little conversation. How are you doing uh, during this time, uh, Jose and Anna? Well, thank you, Nick. It's, it's certainly great to see your face again. Uh, it, it's been a little while. I think last time uh, it was in Bali and I recollect it was either yours or someone's birthday and we made you do the kite hawk dance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. It was Chester's birthday. Uh, and my oh, birthday it was Chester's day. birthday. My apologies. No, my birthday yeah, came but... the, the day after. So you made yes, me dance. Yes, correct. <laughs> correct. Wow, that was memorable. Yeah, what well, a... we've been keeping really well. Uh, since the pandemic hit last April, it was like a blessing in disguise for Anna and I because you know we'd been traveling around the world as you know and we were doing like 35 cities every year year in year out yes. and it was affecting us you know we didn't even know what country we were in anymore <laughs> and what we needed to do was somehow figure out how to downsize our business and how to uh, reorganize the business where we had more time to be at home, work on our trainings, uh, do longer yoga practices, work as musicians and uh, songwriters. Uh, so in many ways, it was a blessing because we really, really just needed a sacred pause. Mm, yes. Speaking about sacred pause, I was really inspired by both of you, Anna and, and Jose, you brought so much inspiration for me to, to start this little uh, sacred pause with different teachers, like give them small bits of pieces of space so they can breathe and, you know, retune their nervous system. And just like how yoga has affected many of us, uh, students, teachers, and even anybody now can is accessible uh, with your collaboration with Anna Forrest. I want to share this because when I started Forest Yoga about 10 years ago, it was with the Guardians. And it was it was something such a powerful, profound experience for me. I never felt my core before. I was like sweating in the beginning of the class, like, what the hell is this? Like and I felt so good. I was like smiling while feeling this new sensation which churning in my belly. And later I was so curious and I wanted to explore more. I met both of you actually in Hong Kong in the Asia Yoga Conference. And I told myself, I, I got to do this training. Yeah, even though I've done so many other yoga training, but this is really exceptional. After the foundation training, like what you say, Jose, I wanted, Chester and me wanted to explore more. And there was an advanced teacher's training in Bali. And that was so exciting. It was such a powerful, profound nine days with you. I, I totally blown away, especially you incorporated uh, ceremony, which is, I, I never experienced that before to have, you know, usually it's separated, like all this, uh, what, what you call this modality of healing. Yeah, I have to go to this person, to this person, but you have somehow managed to figure it out and combine it into one, one session. Yeah, well, between the two of us, we, we've done a lot. You know, we've both travelled the four corners of, of the planet and what Anna brings to yoga and what I bring to yoga is two totally different things. But we were able to have this synergistic collision and uh, to bring everything together. 
And this is something that I was doing uh, previously with Descendants Aboriginal Dance Company and also working as an artistic director, putting pieces together and uh, making spectacular presentations. So it, it was just fantastic to meet Anna and to be able to bring all my healing uh, gifts into Forest Yoga and musical gifts. And in this particular of course, so we've been reformatting it and reshaping it and bringing in new information. And it's it's growing into a whole nother being. And we're really proud of it. It feels like for us, it's like we're going to bring it on as our next masterpiece. We're going to that's how deeply invested we are in making this a thing of great beauty for the people. And, you know, just the one of the, the great things that I personally love about forest yoga is in the class not only is it a healing modality it's also a place to vision quest to connect to your spirit and then find out what does your spirit yearn to do and then how do you take those steps to make it an action a life action instead of just some cool experience you have in a sacred moment or a sacred pause or in church or whatever but how to take this into daily action and continue to connect to the sacred every day as a part of washing your soul clean. And especially in this time where people are in such hardship and fear and shut down and suicidal and doing drugs and alcohol and eating crazy food and putting on weight and getting more and more miserable, this whole lockdown protocol is like, to connect to this depth inside of yourself becomes such a priority and such a gift that whatever the outside world is doing to come into this centered place and then your perceptions are completely different about how do you live this day. And that is what our intent is in bringing forth this work. And I'm really excited about it. We're working on it every day. Wow. And it's just blooming. That's so amazing to know this, that this is something that I really admire both of you, that how you could, you know, take on challenges and transforming it into something wonderful, like adaptation and evolution, which is very obvious in forest yoga. No other system has done this before. No. No, nobody done this before. Like how you manage to, you know, during the lockdown, you still continue to create, continue to evolve, upgrade, or, you know, making it into something that the, the community really needs, like the word mending the hoop of the people. Truly, truly, both of you are walking the talk beyond that and inspiring the world. And the this year itself, you just did something really wonderful, which is, uh, online hybrid online teachers training and yeah. this upcoming one in october will be a hybrid of live and online can you share a little bit more about that this is so exciting to to, to know that this is happening yeah <laughs> well we're going to pull that <laughs> off now we, we put together an absolute uh, masterpiece with the foundation teacher training mm. uh we put a lot of work into the artistic side, the musical side, the prayers, the shamanistic, the yoga. It all came together beautifully. So for the advanced teacher training, I had the idea of doing both, having a limited amount of students in the class and also going online. So this is going to take some doing but uh, we're combining technology, spirituality, musicality, and uh, we've got some tremendous people helping us out on the technical side. And we think we are going to deliver uh, a modern day masterpiece. The advantage Anna and I have over some of the other yoga teachers is there's two of us. And between the two of us, we have vastly different skills. We're not two of the same people. If we were two of the same people, one of us would be unnecessary. <laughs> but we're two vastly different types of people. We've both traveled the four corners of the planet. 
We're both medicine people, ceremonial people, yoga teachers. So we can promise a lot of new material as well. In the advanced teacher training, uh, I have put together a money and business segment. Mm -hmm. And uh, this has never been done for the advanced teacher training before. And I had so much fun going through my entire work history and my international experience. And I created the course, not from other people's words, but from my own first hand experiences. And that's how, what we teach from. We have our own spiritual experiences. We have our own visions. We have our own relationship with the sacred ones. And we teach from that that truth. I also wanted to, Jose mentioned this briefly, and I just wanted to go a little deeper into it. In the foundation training, we had a really great assisting team. So we had a person that was with us, a couple people that were with us physically, and they're helping on different levels. We had a bunch of people who were assisting on cyberspace, and so that they were supervising all the time. Then for the trainees that could only do the recorded sections because they live somewhere so far away that the, the timing was just crazy. Yes. They could do a re recording class. They could do the processes and then have their own teacher, one of our team, who would help them with any questions and who they could turn their, their assignments into. So there was help on every level. And that's also true in this course. It's like we have our forced yoga community of guardians and guardians in training stepping forward to help make this an amazing, supportive, great way to evolve because we're all about that. It's like to take responsibility for your own evolution is like the most incredible thing. And that's what this provides. And this, there's so many courses within the course like there's the money and business there's the ceremony there's nutritional strategy there's music healing and then there's all Anna's old death meditations and uh, processes there is so much richness and really you can just say it's Jose Calaco and Anna Forrest lifetime of experience put into nine days but I'm so excited about the money and business course because traditionally, Nick, I hate money and business courses. <laughs> oh my God, how I hate them. I used to go to so many in the 80s. Like in the 80s, this is when it, it first began. Some friends of mine who I was in business with back in the 80s actually were some of the forefathers. They were before Tony Robbins. Okay. Uh, and they were starting to put money and business seminars together and mm. you know all this bullshit you're gonna do this and you're gonna do that you know empty promises <laughs> and extravagant lifestyles yes. and you're gonna have yachts and cars and, and no you're not <laughs> no you're not <laughs> yeah not unless you're anthony robbins so yeah. i i had a lot of fun putting that together and just talking from first-hand experiences because i begun work at the age of eight because we were poor Italian immigrants that immigrated to Australia penniless. You know, we didn't have anything. The Australian government was recruiting Italian workers. And, you know, we managed to get a little fruit stall and we worked from that. And, you know, from there, just one dream after another unfolded. Mm. But my uh, parents gave me a great work ethic and that led to a colourful career uh, being in over 50 countries and then finally meeting Anna Forrest. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, that's, I'm also excited about the nutritional strategy course as well. I've really upgraded that. And it's not about where you get your protein or uh, your iron or your zinc. And all. I'm not going to talk about magnesium for 45 minutes. I used to get... I used to get bored shitless at these <laughs> nutritional conferences yes. as well. So I had to write money courses and nutritional courses, which were highly engaging. And being a singer of a rock band for many years, 
I knew you have to be entertaining. So I bought that uh, pizzazz into these courses. That's another thing that we bring in. Like I've sat through decades of ceremonies and a lot of the ceremonies that I was an invited guest or participant or one who was holding the circle, so to speak, for the person running it, the ceremonies are, are frequently really boring. Yeah. Boring. And I, I don't think that that's appropriate. I mean, so especially when we're doing a ceremony that is via cyberspace or in the city, it's like there needs to be a uplifting energy in the ceremony instead of like okay well now you know go have your conversation with the sacred ones and we'll see you back in an hour it's like no there, there needs to be a little more investment than that and so that's something that we've worked on very powerfully too is how to make the ceremonies compelling and make it easier to make this profound connection where there is nourishment at very deep levels yeah so nick with descendants, yes. we, we, we traveled the four corners of the world. So we shared many, many ceremonies with so many different nations, being in over 50 countries. And at descendants, we always made it a priority to make mind blowing ceremonies. We're not just gonna smoke people and wave leaves around. We are going to blow minds. So when I met Anna Forrest in 2014, and I was hired to do a mind blowing <laughs> ceremony, there were 70 yoga teachers in the room. And I tell you what, there wasn't one dry eye in the house. We blew wow. Anna's mind. Uh, <laughs> and not only did we blow Anna's mind, and we've got it all on film. But uh, all the teachers in the room had never seen like a serious, serious Indigenous ceremony. So, uh, you know, I've been, I've had a good education on, on how to really deliver the magic. You must have your foot in the magic and also your foot in the showmanship as well and to bring that together. And then there's the other element of it is helping people strip their shields off and be brave enough to invite in this new energy of the ceremony or of connecting to spirit or of this magic. It's like be brave enough to bring it in. And that's, that's a lot of what the yoga practice does is it strips out those layers of numbness and fear and pain so that the neuroreceptors can receive something different. Amazing. Yeah. So Nick, this, We're so this, excited. this is not just yeah, a yoga. This is so amazing. Yeah. yeah. This is a nine day corroboree. Corroboree in Australia means a spiritual gathering. Whether for nine days, we are in ceremony and we are going to take people from the ordinary into the extraordinary. And we did that with the foundation training. We were concerned at first how it's going to go online. But after day one, we thought, wow, you know, there's very little difference between in person and online. Anna and I are still able to make that connection, even, even through Zoom. Just like we're making a connection with you now, yes. we feel the love and connection with you. And this is this is something that we've really become been able to honor is like with this relatively new way of working, which is through Zoom and cyberspace and stuff because of the travel restrictions and all that stuff. We're learning mm -hmm. to be able to reach through this medium. And in our last course, we had people from 15 different countries wow. participating in the course. And I think 12 different countries just on our assisting team. And normally people wouldn't have been able to all gather physically no. into one yes. place because finances, time, babies, all that stuff. And yet because of the nature of this cyberspace connection, we could gather and to have that kind of a worldwide representation where people could be with each other and be with different cultures with each other, it was amazing. 
and we'll have that we'll have that this time wow so it's it's like learning to use this new medium in a really wondrous exciting way i'm i'm really thrilled with it because this was a dream of mine but i didn't know how to get to this i didn't know how to get it into the recording into an online into a worldwide thing and jose brought his expertise and then we brought people who has tech and camera expertise and all this help, which is birthing this new gorgeous thing. Wow. So the lockdown can actually be a blessing in disguise that, you know, all of us are learning, including yourself, Anna and, and Jose. Yeah. This is such amazing opportunity, like to reach out to people who cannot actually see you in person. Now we can actually do the training with you. And I believe this is also on demand, which is, uh, that means they, if, in case they are not able to attend live, they could also watch it at their own time zone. Like for me, it's like 12 hours behind you, 13 hours yes. actually. So I can yeah. actually do my own pace and timing. Uh, so different learners may, may, may need some time to absorb. And actually this is very powerful uh, for, for them to revise and language yeah. where language can be an issue. They can actually take a time to digest the experience. And people uh, that's will one. Have this, yes, Anna, you're saying? People will oh. have this course for many months so they can revisit it and do it again. Like what we've been doing, getting ready for this course, is we're going through the classes and doing the classes every day. So mm. we're getting this beautiful three hour practice every day, getting ready and polishing it and changing up the sequences so they fit more beautifully together. And yes, there are going to be people that cannot show up at the same time on the computer because it's a crazy time in their country or because of the, their other responsibilities. And there is accommodation for that. We have a brand new kind of flexibility for people to attend. So the on-demand, there'll be an assistant who is available to the on-demand people. So there'll be someone to ask questions of. It's... Yeah, it's available. Yeah, it's it's really fantastic, Nick. How it's working out beyond demand. I because I didn't beyond know how, I, I didn't know how it was going to work, but we have like a Facebook group for the on demand people. So people do the talking circle on demand, and we all watch the videos back. We give feedback whenever they have a question. We have guardians and guardians in training answering the questions. It's absolutely mind-blowing how it's developing and Anna and I just keep improving the product but we also need our, our guardians and guardians in training as well because they've been absolutely magnificent in helping us execute our magic yeah and one other thing I you know like that. Yes. Well, one of a million things during this time that has been very intense for many people, this some people are being locked in their homes and just this, this closure is like, when you do this yoga practice every day, you create a real freedom inside. So whether or not you can walk outside your door, you can move the, the imprisonment out of your body and off of your soul. And just one of my personal experiences that I've gotten to work with here during this time is, I am starting to learn how to play the keyboard at 64. And when we were on the road, I couldn't wow. do it. I couldn't do it. And so I sit down. Congratulations. And I have, thank you. And I have someone who comes on, on the Zoom. So I'm learning it on Zoom. And we're, she's slowly teaching me how to play the keyboard and sing at the same time. And that's, it's so great for me to have this, other way of expression because I feel like I have this river of energy moving through me that wants to express through music and, and it's and I'm getting to to do that and like with Jose with all the different music that he brings I'm getting to learn to sing or play the clapsticks or improve on my drumming and it's like yes these are these are things that are so personal and precious to me and I'm doing them in these times. Yeah, it's really incredible. Nick, we live together. We live together, yet <laughs> I haven't got the time to teach Anna the keyboards yes. because I'm already working <laughs> 16 hours a day. 
So 16 hours of the waking hours. day. Wow. That's running the business, mm -hmm. the business side of things. We have the yoga, like long practices. I'm also a, a vegan chef and I've been cooking. Mm. <laughs> I've been cooking, Anna, the most, the most unbelievable Anna, meals. Fantastic. <laughs> because I cook, I'm cooking every day. So you get pretty good when you cook every day. And then I have yes. piano practice. I do two hours piano practice every single night. And then I've got to do guitar practice and yes. then vocal practice. And then when you add all that together, it's 1 a.m. in the morning and uh, we've got to go to bed. <laughs> so uh, so uh, this is how Anna and I, we're making use of every single spare minute. The lockdown has been a blessing, although, Nick, it wasn't at first. It, it was no at fun no, at all. canceling yes. yeah. a year of events and having to refund every, everything and go broke. That, that was the unfun part. No. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we've, we've recovered a little bit now. And, uh, you know, we're just happy that we've streamlined the business that now works for Anna and I's life. Because before, I didn't know how we were going to keep paying the bills, you know, uh, traveling to 20 countries a year. It, it, it just, you know. It just wasn't on. As a matter of fact, one of the last countries we toured was was you, where I picked up my new guitar and uh, bought uh, <laughs> bought the guitar actually at your uh, in Malaysia. In Malaysia, yes, <laughs> that was. Yeah, I just remembered. Oh, that's where I bought the guitar, <laughs> <laughs> and that was one of the last. And and she's still with me. That same loyal guitar. Beautiful. Oh, I have a few questions from the students and participants. If you can, can are you okay? Are you open for it? Okay, yes. so, great. So one of their, this is from Elias, the forest yoga guardian in training. He asked many students wants to learn forest yoga hands-on assist because it's the, the juiciest and that's why he took forest yoga. Touch in a good way. How does the trainee learn this now well what we'll be doing is we have our group that's in the room with us and they'll be doing some hands-on assists we will have segments of the morning and afternoon where we show the hands-on assists so the people that are watching on cyberspace when they watch it again on their own time and they have a student there they can practice it or they can watch it and then go teach their student those particular poses. So there'll be, there'll be that visual component and we'll be talking some about how to touch and what are you doing with your yes. breath and your focus when you touch? Because if you're off fantasizing in your own head and you have your hands on someone, it feels really terrible. Yes. So it's like learning how to focus on what your point is, you know, like helping that person move their energy or to, to move out whatever the kink is and learning how to use your mind, your heart and your quality touch to make a difference in people. So we do go into that. It is different than when we have everybody right around each other, but we will be going, you know, this is, this is easier, but then mm. to watch it and then to work it, people will have that chance. You know, we'll have the camera on there, we'll show it, mm -hmm. and then they their responsibility is to work it when they have a student or to watch it and then go teach a student that they can have face-to-face, hand-to-body contact with. So we are going over hands-on assist. And hands-on assist is a skill that develops over years, learning how to bring that mindfulness in and the the heart and the, the quality touch, not just like, oh, nice hair. It's like you don't, doing that to your <laughs> students just really annoying, you know, or. It's true. We also work with a component that Jose has developed from, from his ceremonies of mm -hmm. music healing. And this can be done physically, like when you have somebody right here, or it can be done 
through the computer because we do a lot of our shamanic music healing through private sessions on the computer. It works really well. And so we'll be coaching people and doing that too so that they can learn that for themselves and then eventually they can bring that to other people. What people need to understand when they take a course like this, especially with us where the information has so many layers and so much depth yes. is first learn to do it for yourself. Like learn how to do the asana before you try to teach it. You know, so it's yes, not like absolutely. you go through a ceremony like chakra meditation or the music healing. It's like, oh, now I can teach it. It's like, no, you can't. Learn it. Go over it many, many times. Many how many times. hundreds of times do you need to do a handstand before you understand it enough to teach it? So this is also a time to give the people working with us a chance to learn. Just do that much, learn. And there's a lot of teaching that they'll be doing and being supervised in this course too. So we can give them feedback on how they teach, how they use their breath and their voice and their alertness and the way that they speak. Because especially in this time of teaching over Zoom, one has to learn how to use one's words effectively and potently. Yeah, what, what is so amazing here, Nick, is Anna's been in the business over 40 years, as oh, yes. everybody knows. And we've never, ever had the foundation or the advanced teacher training recorded. And now in 2021, thanks to the pandemic, we get <laughs> to record both courses. And I'm so glad I was here with Anna to do this because Forest Yoga today is so much more powerful than it's ever been. And we've we have now the technology, we have the artistic direction, the musicality washing through and uh, the shamanic uh, pieces and the veganism, which is very, very important part of forest yoga these days, ahimsa, non-violence towards people, non-violence towards animals, non-violence towards the environment. So I'm just so happy that we are finally able to put down our two biggest works, the foundation training and the advanced teacher training after many, many years of Anna being on the road and doing it at least 20 times. Uh, and now we get a chance to put it in the history journals of forest yoga and yoga in general. Um. This is so amazing. How, how do you feel uh, not not traveling and perhaps you have you mentioned you have more time to do things that actually nourishes you, like picking up our keyboard, Anna Forest, learning playing keyboard and singing, and Jose probably have more time to you know artistically, creatively come out with new materials. How how do you feel about uh, moving forward, forest, forest yoga evolving to the next level? How do you define it? Uh, for yoga is right now i feel very proud of what how we're moving forward through this because it would be easy to go in a different direction of yes. depression suicide numbing out you know overwhelm it'd be it'd be easy to do that but we are choosing to stay alert to what's going on in the world situation and stay centered on what is what is it we can do right now mm -hmm. We can make this beautiful meal. We can do our yoga. We can get this course ready. These are the things that we can do in the world right now. And we're doing that. And that makes me very proud of both of us. I feel like we're doing really great actions. What's happening, Nick, is we have a creative renaissance. That is what's happening with Anna and I right now. It's sort of like a second wind uh, at our age, ah. it's it's like being reborn, and and you know yes. what, Anna and I never stop learning, and this mm. is the key to staying young and relevant. We never ever stop learning. Anna learning keyboard <laughs> at her age is just incredible. Amazing, yes, yeah. I, and and even though I'm I'm quite accomplished on the keyboard, I'm mm. still learning new things all the time on keyboard, guitar. Uh, 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 as a writer as well, writing courses. I've wrote four yeah. 
four mini courses for this advanced teacher training. So it's all coming together. And we never had the time before to just stop and do all this. But having said that, Nick, when the world does reopen again, mm. we would love to combine both worlds, the world of travel and the world of online. Definitely. But we'll do it much more balanced this time because... Definitely, we'd love to see you and meet <laughs> both of you together again in the future. Like Yes. It's... Yes, because we love going to other countries. Mm. We really love that. And and getting to see other people's culture and share what yeah. we think is precious. And do some shopping in Malaysia. <laughs> 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 I still have your suitcase, Nick. The suitcase oh. we bought, I still, that traveled everywhere with me. Really? Okay. Yes. It's, it's been with you too. Wow. I have another interesting question for uh, teachers who want to take the advanced teachers training. Uh, this is from Madeline. She asked, I would like to build up a stronger practice, uh, the advanced practice. Uh, for example, able to do handstand freestanding or deep backbends. Uh, what are the practices that uh, she may want to do on daily in order to build up a confidence and strength to achieve this? Well, one of the things is if she's taking this course, that's going to help a lot. She'll be doing a very intense morning practice. And on many of the days in the afternoon, there's an afternoon practice. Mm. So there's a lot of yoga going on. And then after the course, people will have this course on recording for many months. Do it every day. Mm. Just keep mm. going through it, these nine different classes. And that will help tremendously. One of the problems people have is being disciplined of putting in their practice every day. So my, my question to Madeline would be, are you practicing every day in how much time? Then can you increase the time every other day? Like if you're practicing for 40 minutes a day, can you do an hour every other day? If you're getting ready for this course, you better increase your time quickly because if you're only doing 30, 40 minutes a day and then you're doing three hours in the morning <laughs> and another hour and a half at night, it's going to kick your ass. Yeah. <laughs> and so get in better shape so that you can get more than just your ass kicked because there's more available <laughs> besides that. And you will get strong quickly. We do a mm. lot of mm. upper body work. A lot of dolphins and handstands and forearm balances and, and, and lots of abs and lots of abs. Lots of abs. I, yes. I love it when when you teach the abs. <laughs> abs for breakfast. <laughs> yes. I want you to get daylight between your toes. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> so exciting in the abs. <laughs> I have another yeah. question. There is uh, a lot of abs in this course. In everything we do, there's a lot of abs because we. That's how you build that core authenticity yes. when you know where your core is and you can feel it and you can speak from it then you are more of an authentic human being and you're not just mouthing off some bullshit that you heard mm -hmm. somewhere else and you come off inauthentic and boring so mm -hmm. it's like you you connect to your core you mm -hmm. find out what matters to you and when you speak about what matters to you people want to listen because that's very compelling and then we start to change the nature of our relationships. They get fascinating instead of just something to hang on to because we are afraid of being alone. Our relationships change with this core connection. Wow. That leads to the next question, which is how do you keep your teaching fresh after has you, both of you have been teaching for so many years? Well, it's easy every time we renew the course every time something new comes into the course it makes all the old stuff refreshed yes. so whether it's new music a new presentation new technology one thing feeds the other a new ceremony uh it, it, it's very easy like i mean soon as we start and the cameras are rolling and the adrenaline is pumping Anna and I are really set to go. And it's never the same stuff. 
uh, you know, even though the yoga poses may seem the same, the sequencing may be different, the mm. ceremony at the start will be different, we pray before every class, the spirit is always with us. God is always shining on us just before every class. So every class is like an extraordinary spiritual awakening for Anna and I, like uh, teaching is learning. And uh, like I said before, we, we, we're, we're still learning <laughs> and we'll learn till the day we die. So it's always fresh and exciting. It never, never becomes dull. And to bring that attitude mm. onto the mat, instead of some of what I've seen is like, let's say at a gym, you see people reading the newspaper as they're running on their treadmill. That's <laughs> yes, really I boring. See that. yes. boring. And so like, no, you don't get to do that in this. This is about going on this internal quest. And there are going to be days where you got an injury or you've been sick or your, body, your rhythms are down or you haven't slept for mm. a week. And just mm. getting through the practice is the win. But then afterward, there's, there's a different way of living in your body. You know, like you're more aware, you're filling it out more. You're not just locked up in some little place. There are other days where there's breakthroughs in something mm. as subtle and important as your breath. Or there can be like a big in your mind of a realization <laughs> or moments where you feel yourself actually connecting to your spirit or to something magic. Or when you learn a new way of going into a pose and it makes these new connections, there's something that happens. So when people like diss the poses, like, oh, yeah, well, that's just part of yoga. There's a whole world of discovery in the poses and to bring that quality of attention into it. So that's part of what we teach every day and what we do every day, no matter how we may be drag ass getting onto the mat, you get there and then bring your best quality of attention forward, whether you're injured, sick, or your mind is spinning out on a million things. It's like still switch gears, you know, like changing gears from thinking into a kinesthetic spiritual connection you make that change yeah it, it, it's like a I performance Nick. before every performance, performance it, you get adrenaline and excitement and it's always a new audience and mm. there's always new yogis that are seeing anna and i for the first time so yes. we want to make it an absolutely spiritual revelation not just a yoga class we mm. want revelation we, we, we aim big uh at every class so we'll never get bored of this and when we get to see people Definitely. that we've gotten to work with before that's wonderful especially too because then we can go deeper together mm. you know so it's not like oh yeah no nick's there yeah we know nick who's who's the shiny <laughs> person next to nick it's like there's nick we get to go on this journey together nick yes how great is that that is absolutely true. Every single class both of you have taught is is different. It's always deeper and always like something new that I can learn in each in being present with you. How you let the the not just your class this is a, a mind mind blowing experience. Like what yeah. else is it? Probably and, more and, than. And Nick, even though we have like a set scripts, we always have spontaneity coming in especially for the ceremony i remember in malaysia the workshops mm. you hosted for us working with those musicians oh, we yes. would we would do a, a prayer reading a prayer and then go into the song back to the prayer into the song and it just happened spontaneously and it was absolutely yes goosebumps all over the body so there's always room for spontaneity mm. And we always invite the sacred ones to come in and co-create with us. And, and those prayers sometimes are silent. Sometimes when we do four directions, it's out loud. But that intent is always there. Like, sacred ones, come on in and, and help us create this for the, for the people. And so that happens. And that's also unpredictable because we don't know all of what's going to happen. Yeah. So when Anna and I met, I, I, you know, I said to Anna, I want to change the face of yoga and I'm doing it with the best possible person, Anna Forrest. That's true. 
<laughs> Look, I mean, you know, another thing we teach is for teachers to be authentic and genuine. Mm. You know, do you want to be an echo or do you want to be a voice? Mm. The, the yoga business is full of echo and cliche. So we really, really want to bring out the individual themselves and make them their own guru and own teacher, but give them the steps to get there, the tools to get there themselves. And part of that is learning discernment. Part of that is learning how to listen inside so that yeah. one can begin to sense, you know, am I doing this pose in a way that's helpful and generating energy or is it hurting me? Is this food helpful or is it hurting me? Am I going into my addiction excitement or is this something that builds my luminosity? You know, these people come to us and they say really lazy, stupid things like, oh, you know, I don't know anything about nutrition. It's like, you don't know the difference between a Big Mac hamburger and broccoli? Seriously? <laughs> you don't know the difference? So to begin to understand what is trustworthy inside, and what needs some work because it doesn't have integrity. It doesn't have integrity. And then you don't become so much of a doormat and be swayed by other people's bullying or all of that stuff because yes. you know what's true for you and you can stand in that. And that's so important right now because people are, are completely freaked out and they don't trust themselves anymore. And they're being taught to not trust themselves. They're being taught that whatever you feel inside doesn't matter. And that's a lie. Mm. That's a lie. And so this way of being able to tune in, to feel strong in your core, to know what's truth and what isn't, these are profound life teachings. Yeah. Truth speaking. That. Truth speaking. As you know, truth speaking is a very big part of forest yoga, but people have forgotten truth speaking. Uh, the thing is that first we must recognize what truth speaking is not to know, to then look, investigate what it is. Wow, so profound. That was a tongue twister. <laughs> you want to think about that one? I yeah. was like, mm, okay. <laughs> There's so much. Yeah, because a lot of the time the truth, speaking, truth speaking is someone's speaking, neurosis yes. going off mm -hmm. and they're going, oh, yes, that's my truth. No, it ain't. It's your neurosis going off. And that's discernment, knowing the difference between truth and neurosis. Mm -hmm. When you get triggered, understanding that, that you, you got triggered, you got some old package of archived emotions and experience stuck in there and it just <laughs> went yeah. off. And then when you explode on someone to recognize that person didn't do it, it was from years ago. And these, mm -hmm. these are discernment tools that one learns through this practice. It takes practice. And to discern what's true and what isn't, to be willing to take the time to actually research what's true and what isn't. And sometimes that research is in a pose, doing it yourself. Sometimes it's getting on the computer. Sometimes it's talking to many different people and getting different views since people live different lives. It's like know how to research. Yeah. You know, truth, truth is often an outburst of hostility. But really, we've got to put the hostility aside and we need to put the ego aside, the hurt ego aside, and uh, just basically come from the heart and have no, no motivation behind the words. It, 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 and what I mean is don't leave manipulation out and just come straight from the heart. Mm. So I want to add on to that because I think this is a huge piece of truth speaking. Frequently, we speak something in an attempt to manipulate our listener into responding in a certain way. Like if I tell Nick this, then he's going to give me whatever my fantasy is. Yeah. And so <laughs> this massively big piece of truth speaking is, can I speak whatever it is that's on my heart and mind and leave you to respond any way that you do? give you that freedom and because honestly if you focus on that i mean wouldn't you want that too like if you were listening to something don't you want the freedom to respond in whatever way you do instead of having to fit into somebody's box of 
this is the only way you get to respond in order for us to continue this conversation or relationship. It's, it's a, a beautiful release because so often, especially those of us that have been wounded, so many of us have been wounded one way or the other, we are constantly trying to control everybody else because if you track it back far enough, it's, it's, that's an attempt to keep from getting hurt because when things go out of control, it means we will be hurt. Mm. And that's an old, old, old paradigm. And so to be able to relax on attempting to control whoever you're talking to, speak your peace, that's yours to control. And then let them have the freedom to like, dislike, shudder, cry, whatever it is, and just breathe through the, the other person's response until the next step in the conversation. And that's a part of truth speaking that people frequently miss is stop it with the controlling and the manipulation. Stop it. Yeah. It's exhausting and it's creepy. To yes. take out the self-serving aspect of the words. You know, if you're got some self-serving behind the words or or some secret motivation, then it ain't truth speaking at all. Mm. You've got to take that element right out. Like in relationship, hmm. it's so often that the conversation, especially when it's about something that's hot and heavy, is to prove I'm right. And you have to agree, I'm right. And that's, that's usually a dead end road. It's like hmm. to say, we ha we're having a conflict here and how do we join hands and join forces to walk through this together to a solution? Instead of I'm right, you're wrong, and you have to admit yes. it, and then we'll be done. And, and it's, it's hard to admit this stuff. And one, one thing that I see coming up a lot, and I, I was one of the people that perpetuated this, so it made me very alert to it, is to, at a certain point of intimacy, to use the wound or the abuse as a way to manipulate. I'm more wounded than you, therefore you have to do what I want. Mm -hmm. And it's like, ooh, that's a tough one to get honest on, but get honest yeah. on it anyways. Yeah. It's like, just be aware how often, you know, whoever's listening to this, how often you want to manipulate the person you're talking to. And what if you just spoke about what was important to, uh, to you and then let them respond freely? Mm -hmm. We need that freedom. Yeah, amazing. Uh, I want to bring this note up. I want to congratulate both of you for your recent marriage. It's <laughs> such a beautiful, beautiful, you know, you inspire the world, not only in yoga, but also in relationship. And you, what you shared is so powerful. I'm, I'm so happy that this is recorded and many people will be able to you know, extract the wisdom out from this recording that that you have shared. So such a beautiful, beautiful sharing from both of you. Never been heard before. <laughs> yes, that's the truth. This is the Thank advanced you. yoga, isn't it? Like really being in a relationship and long-term relationship and actually make it work is, is the advanced yoga. I, I can, I think so. <laughs> oh. I, I think relationship is very much of a yoga dance, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it's very easy for Anna and I. We have the same interests. We have the same goals. Uh, we're vastly different people, but we share the same interest in mending the hoop or, and restoring the shattered state of humanity. And that's the most rewarding work there is. So many people have reached out to us with serious, serious problems. And to help those people is the most rewarding work that Anna and I do. You know, we're not in this for the money. Uh, money is irrelevant. And uh, for Anna and I, it's doing what we love that we see yes. as the success. We're doing what we love and, and being able to do it for such a long, long time. And not working for anybody else. You know, being, a, being our own boss <laughs> certainly helps. Wow. Is, is there any piece that you'd like to add on for, 
for our listeners, for the viewers, or if you'd like to truth speaking and share what what's in your heart now. Well, one thing we, we need to mention is the dates for the advanced teacher training, which was yes. from October 2 to October 10. It will be in Seattle. Uh, it'll be on USA time. USA. So, and of course, it can be done on demand and people get to keep the recordings for 12 months. Uh, website? Website is www.forest dot yoga forest for those yoga. who are new forest is with a double r not one r and uh anna what words of wisdom do you have i would like whoever's listening to this to experiment with being kind to yourself and the, here's where discernment comes in some people with the addiction mind they'll think oh like smoking my dope or you know, watching my pornography and masturbating or, you know, these are, these are actions of kindness. It's like, no, these are actions of neurosis, fear, and addiction. So learning how to do something that is kind to yourself and then making that a daily practice. So when you do yoga, that's a kindness. When you take the time to prepare a beautiful, healthy, luminous meal of food, that's a kindness. When you choose to have a real heart-to-heart -heart conversation with someone, and you're honest, that's kindness. And so to start finding out how do I be kind as part of my daily diet for this evolving soul to feed myself kindness every day. And I say to your listeners today or starting from now, try looking in a new direction instead of looking harder in the same direction. looking at the new direction yeah that's the, that's the well, we secret keep looking harder in the same direction and the, you know that same direction the future is always an unending repeat of the past and we don't want that for well for some people they may want that but generally speaking mm. for most people no another way that's a right. different perception on, on that is like if you feel like you're stuck and you're hitting the wall and you're hitting the wall and you're hitting the wall, it's like, well, move and find where's the doorway. Stop running into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's powerful. <laughs> I want to say huge gratitude. Thank you, Anna and Jose for, you know, making this time and sharing your passion, your, your life work with the whole world. From, from bottom of my heart, and thank you for both of you for keep doing what you're doing. You really inspire the whole entire world. Yeah, I will speak for myself first and the rest of the world as well. You inspire all of us in so many different profound ways. So I want to thank you so much for that. Thank, thank you, Nick. We take that in. We take that in. Thank you. We love you. Love you both of that. you so much. You yes, I do. Yeah. Take care. We will connect soon again. Yes.